Okay, so if we can agree listening is really important, which it sounds like everybody can agree on that. And then the only question though is to make sure that we're listening to different things every day, which is, which is why I kind of like the story. Did you take the story, I mean, how long did it actually take me to tell that story? Uh, three minutes. Three minutes. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not eating up a lot of your day, but we use a lot of different words, new words, new concepts, and they just aren't going to come up in the textbook, or until they come up, you know, so the kids can, can already be introduced to them. Because a lot of teachers are like, well, no, I'm talking the whole time. Yeah, but you're saying the same things you said yesterday. So perhaps why a number of, um, in our case, Taiwanese uh, English students don't know this broad diversity of uh, English cliche is because they have not been exposed to a broad diversity yeah. of it because it's the same stuff every day. It's repetition versus versus uncharted treks through language. Well, think about this, like like in if you've been teaching yourself for a long time, you're going to hit that chapter in the book that says like these are common idioms in the English language. Mm -hmm. and you're going to learn like all of them in one day. You know, don't don't spill milk over a dead fish or you know whatever idioms that people. <laughs> <laughs> People say it's uh, pretty common. Yeah, it's, 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 well, it's, it's taking off. It's like baby fish now. It's taking off. But the point is that do the kids learn anything? From that? I mean, I think that's a wasted chapter. I don't even do that chapter. When we get to that, I'm like, uh, you know, they, they, they do those idioms. Uh, like you're familiar with the Chinese book. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. But especially like uh, at some of the higher levels, they have, uh, it's like, they just suddenly throw, like, 20 of them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinese were just like, cheesh, man. And then they put them all in the one story. It's like yeah. all the idioms, and you're like, okay, well, uh, I'll, it's, it's very tedious to like, to learn them in that way. If yeah. I was given one occasionally, I exactly. Mean, there would be retention, but basically I'm like, okay, you know, I, at the, I've, I can study them, I'm really, uh, and it's been a while, I don't remember any of them. The most important, any of them. the most important person is you, the secret is you, you are unique, you are whatever. And now we just told a story, and that's a lot more tangible than if you just read it and memorized it. Right? It's idioms. You know, you know, you know. Little kids, you'll see them doing their, their Chinese homework. There's these little books they sell where they uh, kind of read and, and write Chinese in there, and it's got stuff written. Those things, even at the second and third grade level, I can't read a lot of it. You know, all the characters, but it's all idioms. That's how they learn their Chinese yeah, idioms. Right? That's how they learn the Chinese idioms, but that's not really how they learn it. They learn it because they've already heard it from their parents, they've heard it on TV, they've heard it, whatever. But those books, even though they're just for little kids, and the characters are actually pretty simple, and I can't read most of them because it's just tons of idioms. Hey, if, if you sat in a Chinese class every day where they told stories, do you think it would help you learn Chinese? What's the hardest thing for you in learning Chinese? Learning the song or the sentences. The general sound about how things go. Yeah. General, general rhythm, language rhythm. What about English? When the kids are speaking English, what do you think is one of the biggest problems with the kids speaking English? I would say the same. Yep. I grab students and sit with them for half an hour a day and try to get them to sing the sentences right instead of sounding like a robot. Yep. Yep. Because, because of the Asian inflection issue, they tend to talk like this and, you know. So I literally have them practice. I went to the store yesterday, and I like spent 15 minutes getting it to sound somewhat right. Yeah. yeah there's on The Simpsons. They have the uh, the uh, writer from Wolfcastle. That's the Arnold Schwarzenegger character, and he's tra trying out for the part of Adam Man in a movie, right? Oh, Atomic Man. Atomic Man. And Atomic Man's slogan is "Up and Adam," you know. But he's German, so he's like "Up and at them." <laughs> no, no, up and at them. Up and at them. But it's the same thing. It's because because the kids are trying. To pronounce every single syllable, and in, and in, just like in Chinese, you want to pronounce every syllable and pronounce it the same way every single time, and then you don't have any of that flow. So where would that flow come from? How would they learn the flow and sing song with the language? Sure, sure, listening through listening. Yeah, we can't see the forest for the trees, so it comes back to go back to the big picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we just come keep keep coming back to the same thing. It's it's listening, 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 and then number two is reading because it's all about input. It's 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 not as much about output. Now cooking them later. Well, thank everybody for uh, thank you. for indulging me. Thank you. Thank you.